Welcome back everybody. In this week's video, I'll be talking about baby southern alligator lizard care. Keep in mind this care guide is only for baby southern alligator lizards and not adults. I'll do another care guide when my alligator lizard becomes an adult. I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> Baby alligator lizards are very tiny. When they come out of the egg, they'll be around one inch in total length. My baby alligator lizard is around five inches in total length, that's including his tail. Their tails make up pretty much like half of their body, maybe even a little more than that. So it really just depends on how old the alligator lizard is. It's not very common to find baby alligator lizards though. With alligator lizards, it's very hard to determine their sex. The males will sometimes have wider heads, and then the females will have more narrow heads. Males will also be larger than females, but it's hard to tell what's big and what's small when you don't know the age of the lizard. Being so tiny, baby alligator lizards don't require a huge enclosure. It really depends on if you're using a heat lamp or not. If you are using a heat lamp, the minimum is going to be a 10 gallon. Now I know I said before that you can't get a temperature gradient in a 10 gallon, but I did a little experiment and you actually can. I'll go more in depth on that when we talk about lighting. I personally like to use a 10 gallon because my baby loves to run around the enclosure and is very active, uh, so I wanted to give him room to explore. I would say the bare minimum for a baby alligator lizard would be a five gallon. I feel like anything smaller than that just wouldn't be suitable for them because they are a very active species. For substrate, I just use plain eco earth. And sand, I don't know why I didn't say sand there. I, I use a mixture of sand and eco earth and I spray it down occasionally, not very often though. I try to replicate what these lizards would have in the wild. So I wanted to add some sand in there because that's what's in Southern California. I also use a screen lid to give it good ventilation. This way the humidity doesn't rise too high in the enclosure. Alligator lizards are not extremely prone to impaction. I have had an issue with this guy swallowing substrate though. One night I went to turn off his lights and I saw him gagging in the enclosure. Turns out he had tried to swallow a big chunk of eco earth. I was trying to get his mouth open. He would open it occasionally, but he wouldn't do it very often. But I could definitely see it in his throat and it was not going down. When his mouth did open, I got my tweezers and put half of it inside of his mouth, not down his throat, just enough to open his mouth. And then I could see what was going on down in his throat. It took me a while, but I finally got the piece of substrate out of his throat, and he has been doing well ever since. I do not expect this to happen again. I don't know why he did it. It was kind of weird. He's never done it before. And most of the time, this does not happen with alligator lizards. Because of this, you might want to use a non-loose substrate, such as paper towel for your... They do enjoy burrowing, so if you give them a loose substrate, make sure it's a couple inches deep so they can burrow in it. As I said in my reptile money saving tips video, you can use something like a takeout container for your alligator lizard. I don't really think they look nice and I've stopped using them as hides. Now I use the reptile branded ones. They are a little bit expensive, but the looks of it makes up for the price. Another reason I use the reptile branded ones now is they help with shedding. They have a nice rough texture that the lizards can rub up against. Again, with baby alligator lizards being so small, you can use things like leaves as hides. Or maybe you find a flat rock and you kind of wedge it in the ground where there's a little place for the alligator lizard to hide. You can get things from outside that you can use as hides. You don't have to buy a hide or make one yourself. Like most diurnal lizards, alligator lizards require UVB. I'm repeating a lot of the things I was saying in the Western Fence Lizard Care Guide. Well, that's because alligator lizards and Western Fence Lizards are very similar to each other when it comes to care. Alligator lizards are semi-warm blooded. This means they can regulate the temperature of their body to some extent. They can't do it as much as mammals, and this is why they are semi-warm blooded. Because of this, there's a bit of an argument on whether they need additional heat or not. Um, I forgot to say what my opinion on it was there. I personally feel like a heat lamp is necessary for alligator lizards, especially since most of these are wild caught and with wild caught animals, you want to replicate what they would have in the wild as much as you possibly can. 
I was wrong when I said a 10 gallon enclosure measures 20 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches. This means if you put a heat lamp on one side of the enclosure, the other side of the enclosure isn't gonna be much cooler than that. Because it is possible. I recently did an experiment with two thermometers. I placed them on opposite sides of the enclosure. The one on the basking side was in the low 90s, and then the one on the cold side was in the low 70s. I did try this with the halogen mini dome, so I'm going to do it with the bigger fixtures to see if there's less of a difference of temperature in the enclosure, because most people use the bigger fixtures. This one's pretty simple, just throw some crickets in there and then they're good. I'm just kidding, it's much more complicated than that. I think this is the third time I'm saying it in this video, but since they're so small, you have to use things like pinhead crickets. I feed my alligator lizard every day and I feed him mostly lobster roaches. I feed him juveniles to babies or babies to juveniles. That's probably a better way to say it. He has a big appetite and he burns that energy because he's walking around the enclosure all the time. He's much more active than something like a bearded dragon. I also dust these insects in calcium with D3, which is also a requirement. You can't skip out on that. Although water isn't really a hard thing about caring for these lizards, you do have to condition the water in some way. The easiest way to condition the water would be using Reptisafe. Reptisafe is a product that cleans out all the bad stuff in tap water. All you have to do is put a couple drops of Reptisafe in their water, and then it'll be clean and safe for them to drink. Another thing you could do is just use water from your refrigerator that would be safe for them to drink. Most alligator lizards are not great for handling. Lucky for me, I found one that for some reason is really chill and does not mind handling at all. He has not once tried to bite me and it's pretty awesome. However, most alligator lizards will not be like this. Especially adult ones will be very aggressive and try to bite you and let me tell you their bite does hurt. So if you're looking for a lizard to handle a lot, this may not be the one for you. They can also drop their tails, uh, they will do this to get away from predators, and they won't grow it back the same as it was when their first one was there. With frequent handling, they can tame down and be pretty pleasant creatures, but most of the time, since they're all wild caught, they will be pretty crazy. Alligator lizards are pretty much available nowhere. You can look online, you can look at reptile expos, you can look in pet shops, and you probably won't see them there. So the way you're gonna get your alligator lizard is by catching it in the wild. So if they aren't native to where you live, the chances of you getting one are very low. I hope to see these lizards more available in the hobby in years to come because they are a really awesome species. Thank you all for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe. Also, if you have any questions on Southern Alligator Lizard Care, uh, you can put them down in the comments below and I will try to respond to every single one of those comments. That's it for this one, guys. See you next week.